When I see the dinosaur tracks here at Grand Cache, I'm completely in awe. They are the most magnificent fossil locality that I've ever seen. It's just so dramatic when you see it. When the sun hits them just right, the footprints just jump out at you, and it's, it's awe-inspiring to see them. The tracks, the setting, even the town of Grand Cache, it's one of my favorite places to come and see, and I would certainly recommend that anybody who has the opportunity should come and, and see the tracks for themselves. The Grand Cache Dinosaur Track Site is located about 20 kilometers north of the town of Grand Cache, about an hour and a half south of Grand Prairie. They're located in the middle of a coal mine that's currently being mined by a Grand Cache Coal Company. The tracks in this area are 100 million years old. They're from the middle Cretaceous, uh, Albion the stage of the uh, Cretaceous. When they were formed, they were at sea level. There used to be an ocean to the east and to the northeast as well. So it would have been a much different climate than it was today, very warm. The first tracks were found in this mine back in the, in the late 80s. And that was by a combination of uh, visiting geologists and also some of the people that worked for the coal mine. They notified the Terrell Museum and Terrell sent a couple expeditions up to do initial survey work. And then I took it on as a master's project and through the whole time I've had fantastic access it's been a great place to study and learn about fossil dinosaurs and other vertebrates because it's all here. There's thousands and thousands of footprints and there's all kinds of different preservations, lots of different behaviors. And since there's 25 different sites in the mine, many of them represent different types of environments. So you get to see that certain animals had environmental preferences or tolerances and there's uh, certain environments that other animals tended to avoid. We came into the mine yesterday and uh, spotted this, uh, this slab here, which has a lot of little avian uh, footprints, so little footprints of birds. This site has a pretty big diversity of track types and animals that made the tracks. It includes uh, large theropod dinosaurs, probably some type of an allosaurid, not allosaurus itself, but one of its descendants. There's also at least three types of medium-sized uh, dinosaurs, and we're not sure of the identity of those. There's one type of small meat-eating dinosaur as well, a small theropod that was likely an ornithomimid because of the long paces and stride. It was the speed demon. We also have probably five or six types of avian tracks, including uh, tracks of small shorebirds and also larger wading birds that would have resembled uh, cranes. And finally, we have crocodilian uh, swim tracks. Dinosaur tracks right at the base here that you can see. And uh, some of them are infilled. Like this one here is, a, uh, is an ankylosaur foot and handprint. So it's a quadrupedal dinosaur. So there's the heel, and there's one of the digits, one of the outer digits, and another digit, and another digit. There's probably a fourth one in here. These dinosaur tracks here at Grand Cache were found directly as a result of the mining by Smoky River coal, and to some extent, Grand Cache coal as well. And there are other industries, uh, oil and gas, oil sands, that are also turning up fossils, not necessarily dinosaur tracks, but they are finding fossils as well. The big thing is they're finding these fossils, they're bringing them to our attention. So they're not just being lost or tucked away somewhere in a mine, somewhere never to be seen by science. They're finding them and they're calling us. We have lots of meat eaters, we have some plant eaters, we have birds, we have crocs. So let's go take a look at the tracks because that's what you came here for. Over the next few days, uh, I'm going to be leading a couple of tours. And what the tours are designed to do is to get a bit of an interest in having some sort of tourism interpretive facility or program established at these sites. As each one erodes, it exposes the next layer of tracks. These sites are one of Canada's best kept secrets and it's uh, actually uh, would do them justice to have more people uh, see and appreciate them. Can you guys see this? Okay, that's a left footprint of, a, of an ankylosaur. The handprint's right here. This is the right footprint, handprint. Left, right, left, right, all the way across. It's an opportunity 
to diversify and open up these uh, these sites to the public. Grand Cash Coal is is not opposed to opening these sites. I mean, it's not our land to begin with. We're just temporarily borrowing it. And if we can fit that into a reclamation plan and a reclamation strategy as a long-term end goal, I, I think it's a win-win for both us and the public. The density for footprints on this layer is about 100 per square meter. So a square you know, meter by meter, 100, 100 tracks. So this is a very densely uh, populated uh, surface. This attraction here is going to be very welcome to the economy of Grand Cache. Present time, the economy is not that great here in Grand Cash with mines shutting down and problems in the forest industry. It could be a lifesaver for the town of Grand Cash. I see it as somewhere where people can stop and take a break in the middle of their day as they're traveling. They can stop and have lunch in the downtown. They can take a bus, come on up and see the dino tracks and just have little kids use their imagination on what they can see up here. There is an avian trackway, a bird trackway, that is right in line with that theropod trackway that's coming down. It's an interesting trackway because it's walking like a bird, so it's making short paces and strides, so and very toed in, very pigeon toed. That's how the trackway starts. It's going, you know, right, left, right, very short pace and stride. As the trackway progresses, the pace and stride increase and the footprints straighten out, and then it ends. <laughs> so what do you think might have happened? <laughs> or it flew away. I think the. People will come here to see these tracks in conjunction with the dinosaur museum that's already operational at Wembley. It's not that far away. And the attraction appears to be to the younger generation. They're in love with dinosaurs and anything associated with dinosaurs. The Philip J. Curry Dinosaur Museum in the Grand Prairie region is something that opened in 2015. People think that I have a lot to do with that museum. Well, I don't. I mean, it's something that was named in honor of me uh, because I've done a lot of work in the Grand Prairie region looking for dinosaurian resources. The idea of building a museum, though, goes back a long way. It was there already in the 1970s that people started talking about the fact that Grand Prairie needed some more local museum that was going to display dinosaurs found in that region of the province. And uh, basically, it represents not just the Grand Prairie region, but the whole of northwestern Alberta. The museum offers technological tools that allow people to engage with the exhibits in a way that a lot of museums don't offer. So a lot of virtual reality viewers to bring creatures back to life from the Cretaceous. There are microscopes they can look at tiny fossils and understand ecological systems that are long gone. They can interact with CT scanning devices that allow them to look inside a dinosaur's head. There's lots of things like that. When visitors come to the Philip J. Curry Dinosaur Museum, during the summer we offer tours out to the Pipestone Creek site, so visitors can, can come and go on a guided hike through the campground and to the site itself, talking about the paleontology of the region and being able to see the bone bed. And if you're very lucky, uh, if it happens to be during one of our field stints where we're actually working the site, uh, we may be at the, the bone bed itself. We have worked for a long time in the Grand Prairie area on one particular bone bed. It was found by a school teacher in the mid-1970s. This turned out to be a bone bed that is a place where you get many, many individual animals that are buried in the same place. In this particular case, the bone bed represented a mass death of a herd of horned dinosaurs, and the horned dinosaur is called Pachyrhinosaurus. So far, we've excavated the skulls of more than 25 specimens out of that one bone bed. But it's also one of the richest bone beds I know of anywhere in the world for dinosaurs. We were getting up to 300 bones per cubic meter out of that bone bed, and the bone bed stretches for more than 400 meters that we know of. So we've got work to do for probably another 100 years there in terms of excavating that bone bed and finding new information about Pachyrhinosaurus. We still haven't figured out why the animals are all there. 
uh, what caused this mass death, and so on. So we continue to excavate that bone bed looking for new evidence. Alberta is known worldwide as um, one of the richest sources of dinosaur fossils anywhere. Perhaps people take it a bit for granted because uh, the faunas are relatively well known. People have been doing field work in Alberta for a long time. And I think with the field work we're doing in the Grand Prairie area, that will hopefully open up another part of Alberta's fossil record to international attention and show people that there's yet another side to Alberta's fossil richness. Grand Prairie is relatively a, a newer area in terms of paleontology in Alberta. There has been work done there in the past, but it's been fairly limited. Um, and one of the reasons for that is because there's very little exposure of the rock up there. Most of the landscape is covered in crops and forests, fields, that kind of thing. So it's difficult to prospect up there. There's less areas that you can get to easily to look for fossils. However, when we do go to those areas and search the rocks, we find fossils there, and we find a lot of fossils there. In Grand Prairie, we know that there are two very common dinosaurs, um, a ceratopsian called Pachyrhinosaurus and a hadrosaur called Edmontosaurus. So we expect to find more of those, and that would be interesting. Um, but I think the more um, scientifically significant possibility is uh, finding additional animals. And we have bits and pieces of them. We know that there are several theropods, for example, meat-eating dinosaurs in that area because we find teeth and other fragments that show they're there. We know that beyond dinosaurs, there are turtles and these crocodile-like animals called champsosaurs. And there's every reason to expect that we'll find members of other dinosaur groups, potentially lizards, potentially crocodilians. So we just need to get out there and find more sites and get to know this Cretaceous fauna better and simply what was going on in the Grand Prairie area during the late Cretaceous. <laughs>